Hi, this is Dr. Gregory Sadler. I'm a professor of philosophy and the president and founder of an educational consulting company called Reason.io, where we put philosophy into practice. I've studied and taught philosophy for over 20 years, and I find that many people run into difficulties reading classic philosophical texts. Sometimes it's the way things are said or how the text is structured. But the concepts themselves are not always that complicated, and that's where I come in. To help students and lifelong learners, I've been producing longer lecture videos and posting them to YouTube. Many viewers say they find them useful. What you're currently watching is part of a new series of shorter videos, each of them focused on one core concept from an important philosophical text. I hope you find it useful as well. One of the problems that arises fairly frequently in, in relation to friendships and other relationships in our real day-to-day -day lives is something that Aristotle will talk about in terms of what we might call the demands of multiple relationships. We get into cases where we can't actually satisfy everybody, we can't, we can't do what we think that we ought to or, or provide what we would like to give back to everybody who we're involved with. And so the question is, who do we owe what to? Uh, another way to think about this is, is what sort of ordering of priorities do we establish to, to decide between the, the legitimate claims of, of various people in our life? We may not, in fact, be able to satisfy <coughs> all of them. And one of the things that Aristotle tells us that's very important about this is that we cannot define precise rules. He actually uses the term uh, which means to define, to, to date, you know, set out literally uh, limits or, or borders. We, we don't have the capacity to create sort of like a checklist that would work in every single case. Now, there are a lot of, you know, you might say codes of, of morality out there that will sometimes detail, here's where your first duty lies, here's where your second duty lies, here's what you owe to each person. But the problem with that is that they often end up being quite inflexible and sometimes actually going against reason. So we see a lot of clashes between um, you know, one way of trying to resolve this and then what the demands of the specific situation are. And there, there could be some real unfairness that happens. Aristotle's solution is, is quite interesting. The first thing that he tells us is that there is no one single person who is in every single case entitled to be given first priority. So, you know, that's going to make things difficult to begin with. There, there could be certain areas in which we have to give certain people first priority. For example, um, you know, in, in, in terms of my child's school, uh, my children get first priority as far as I'm concerned. But, you know, what if my child ends up uh, bullying another child? Do I stick up for my kid against the principal and say, who are you to tell my kid what to do? That would actually make me a bad parent. Uh, so in that case, I, I have to take the side of the, the other kid. I have a responsibility there. And you can say, well, that's just a matter of, of ethics and not necessarily a matter of friendship or relationships. But it could indeed be a matter of relationships. My kid bullies the kid who lives next door, who is a neighbor who I actually like. How do I handle this? Do I say my child right or wrong, or do I weigh things differently? Um, you might actually say that what my kid is entitled to in that case is, is being told, hey, knock it off, or I'm going to punish you. But um, th this is a very important thing. No one single person is entitled to be number one in every single case. And, and the upshot of that is when people try to tell us that they have to be treated as number one in every single case. From Aristotle's perspective, that should be a red flag. We should be saying, there's something wrong with this situation. We need to uh, think long and hard about whether we want to continue to be friends in the same way with this person. Jealousy very often works like that, doesn't it? The person insists that they have to be placed front and center, or else you don't really love them. You don't really care about them. Um, it happens even in business relationships. You know, one person insists that they have to be, uh, you know, taken into account before all the other clients. No, that's, that's a problem. Now, Aristotle does give us a, a general rule, but it's one that has exceptions. So what is the general rule? He says that we should return services prior to doing additional things for other people 
who, you know, like for example, um, our, our friends, the ones that we hang out with, our comrades, as he calls it, the hetai, right? Um, we should undertake, or we should, we should make good on our obligations that we already have before engaging uh, the limited resources and time that we have with, with somebody else. So if I have um, been uh, lax in actually getting back in touch with my, my friends in the area who are you know waiting for me to reciprocate on inviting them to dinner after they've invited me to dinner, I should not be going out and seeking out somebody else to have dinner with before them. I should make good uh, on that. If I owe a letter to somebody, I should spend the time writing that letter rather than emailing somebody else who, who is new, who isn't already connected with me. Um, and, and we could go on and on and on. A lot of times people will um, favor one, one person, uh, whether it's their, their lover or spouse, uh, could be both by the way, um, their mentor, the, their protege, uh, their very close friend, their sibling, their parent, their child, over um, the, the, the rightful claims that other people have already placed upon them, and Aristotle thinks that that's, that's, that's wrong. Now, one of the interesting exceptions that he gives is this case of being ransomed. One of the problems that did arise in ancient Greece was there were uh, what we call hunters of men, <coughs> kidnappers, and they would kidnap you and hold you for ransom, right? Uh, some areas were particularly prone to this, where there were pirates who would like to hold people for ransom and make money that way. Um, Aristotle says, who do you have this obligation to? You get ransomed by somebody. Now, your father and that person both get taken by uh, the pirates at the same time. You only have enough money to ransom one of them. Who do you ransom before the other one? Who, do you, who is the one who you ransom? Do you ransom the one who actually, you know, already incurred, uh, you know, or you incurred a debt with them by them ransoming you? Should you respond in, in turn? Or should you ransom your father first? Mm, good question there. Now you might say, well, you already owe your father so much more than you could possibly provide him with, uh, so that you should favor this. Aristotle doesn't actually you know, give you a one-time-for-all solution to this. He just proposes it as a moral dilemma that you want to think about. Another set of examples that we could think about more generally is where there are demands of nobility, the tokalon, right? Something is, is, is fine, something is noble. That may override this, right? Or necessity, you know? Um, you, you are placed in a crisis situation, and if you don't act right now, human lives are going to be lost or so much property is going to be lost that it's going to lead to, you know, a terrible life for everybody else. You have to act, and that's doing, you know, something for other people rather than following through on the obligations that you already have. Great example of, of that sort of thing would be, that consider, um, you know, what goes on in companies when there's something going on that might require some whistleblowing, right? Um, you, you know, if you've been given good benefits packages, maybe, you know, your friend wants you to look the other way, but there is kind of a, a necessity or there's a moral nobility involved in following through on telling the truth about what's actually happening. Uh, maybe it's whistleblowing about environmental impact on a vulnerable community, right? Somebody being poisoned. Um, now, Aristotle says, uh, to go on with this, that we owe different things to different people. And he has a, a nice discussion of this. He, he says, um, here we go. Um, it, it would be felt that our parents have the first claim on us for maintenance, since we, we owe it to him as a debt and to support the authors of our being, stands before self-preservation and moral mobility. Honor is also due to parents as it is to the gods, though not indiscriminate honor, you don't owe the same honor to one's father as, as to one's mother, nor the honor due to a great philosopher or a general. But you owe to your father the honor appropriate to a father, to one's mother that which is appropriate to, to her. So we already have a set of different obligations to different people based on what their role and their relationship is. He says, we should also pay to our seniors the honor due to their age by, for example, rising when they enter offering them a seat, and so on. 
Towards comrades and brothers, he outlines a, a different set of obligations. We uh, should use frankness of speech, parasia. We should actually tell them how things are. Whereas with parents, maybe we, uh, we, we soft pedal a little bit. We don't necessarily call mom and dad on their nonsense because they're mom and dad. But with brother and sister, we say, hey, you're screwing up. Uh, what, are, what are you doing there, right? And he says, we should share all, all of our possessions with them. Kinsmen also, fellow tribesmen, fellow citizens, the rest, to all we must always endeavor to render their due, comprising their several claims in respective relationship, and of virtue or utility. So you see there's a number of different bases here that we have to kind of juggle, so to speak, and that, that can be quite difficult. That's why we don't have precise rules for this. He also says that, uh, and this is where we'll, we'll finish up with this, when the people are similar in relationship, like we're talking about two people that we're friends with in terms of pleasure, and one, say, is an older friend and one is a newer friend, um, or one is uh, a friend who also has some virtue going for them and the other one doesn't. It's fairly easy to decide in those cases how we should prioritize, at least for a person who's, who's a good practical reasoner. It becomes more difficult, uh, as he says, when the people that are connected to us are in different types of relationships with us. So how do we reconcile the uh, obligations to our parents and to our friends, and to our spouse. Sometimes that can get, or to our, our, our work colleagues, right? We start mixing in all these different people, all these different considerations and values. It starts to get rather tricky, and it requires a lot of looking at the specific situation and making sense of that. That is where, where the, the virtue, the intellectual virtue of phronesis, or practical wisdom, becomes particularly important. Uh, in part because we don't have any hard and fast rules, and that's precisely where phronesis enters in and helps us out. So this is a, a real issue that uh, Aristotle is grappling with here, an issue that all of us have to face at one time or another, uh, and um, one that is not going to go away, and so he provides us with some useful advice about this.